Now we'll talk about a few uh, general theories uh, to um, understand the overall nature of these disorders. Uh, one of the most widely discussed and very clearly supported theories is the diathesis stress model. And diathesis is just a kind of, you know, uh, obscure word for meaning kind of a genetic vulnerability. Uh, a lot of these disorders have this kind of classic, at least according to twin studies, kind of 50% heritability, maybe less according to GWAS studies, but, um, you know, basic kind of a propensity or predisposition towards experiencing one of these disorders. And then you have some kind of stressor, some kind of environmental uh, trigger or event that that produces the actual kind of full-blown experience of one of these disorders. When we think about this attractor model, uh, that stress is really kind of uh, can be unpacked into that whole kind of progression of symptoms that, that kind of lead to this overall attractor state. Uh, and then uh, one, in this context, kind of thinking about different therapeutic approaches, which we'll talk about next, uh, Mindfulness-based therapy tries to kind of really target that stress and kind of eliminate that or reduce that level of uh, subjective stress experience by experiencing some kind of challenge to your cognitive system. And a more elaborated version of the diathesis stress model is due to Barlow, uh, known as the triple vulnerability theory. Uh, so this is kind of dividing the vulnerability into two components, one being the genetic, the other being the kind of psychological uh, vulnerability and this kind of emphasis on that there are patterns of belief and thought that may or that make you more or less susceptible to these kinds of uh, stress kinds of uh, effects, these environmental type effects, which are now described in this context as a kind of specific psychological vulnerability, uh, something that's very specific to a particular context. Um, and so you have these kind of vulnerabilities uh, and then uh, if you have some kind of event, again, that triggers uh, these things, then that's when you get the full manifestation of the disorder. Next, we're going to talk about therapy. We've said a, a bit about this, but just to kind of provide a bit more uh, depth on this topic. Uh, so really, psychotherapy is this kind of unique relationship and unique kind of situation where, uh, you know, the therapist and the, the client are kind of exclusively focused on the issues uh, of, of the client, the person who really needs this help. And so unlike in a normal kind of relationship with your friends, where you feel like, oh, you're, you know, you're going to tax your uh, relationship and become kind of a burden to people if you start talking about your problems uh, with a therapist, you don't have to worry about that, right? So there's a clear sense that, yes, our goal here is to understand and fix your problems. Uh, the therapist is paid. So again, you don't have that sense of, you know, uh, guilt about uh, sort of focusing on your needs. Um, there's kind of this structured environment. It's time delimited. Um, it has this kind of, you know, uh, closed end type of nature. So it's very much like the medical model. You know, it's kind of the therapist is the doctor and they're going to come in and, and heal you. And then that's it. And so you don't have any issues about ongoing relationships and in, in theory and uh, in practice mostly. And so, um, yeah, so it's just a, it's a very unique kind of relationship. It's really one that establishes uh, a social bond. Again, this kind of idea that social forces are very strong and that this is a situation in which you have a kind of safe, uh, you know, uh, non-challenging, non-threatening environment where uh, you can kind of rebuild your sense of self-efficacy. You have this kind of mentor, coach, teacher type of person there to help you, inspire you, and provide uh, kind of uh, forms of guidance and patterns of thought that may help you uh, kind of get out of the rut. Therapeutic uh, allegiance, therapeutic alliance is are terms that are used to talk about kind of the unique aspect of this relationship. Uh, there's several different specific forms of therapy, and there's this notion of kind of current empirically supported therapy. So basically therapy that has been essentially through various randomized, you know, uh, controlled studies uh, has demonstrated time and again that it is in fact effective. And so cognitive behavioral therapy is really the most 
widely adopted therapy. It's, it, it involves uh, ways of changing both thought and behavior. So this cognitive and behavior aspect, um, and it incorporates lessons from cognitive psychology and behavioral behaviorism. Uh, and it's widely used for treating generalized uh, anxiety disorder, panic, and depression. And mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, we've talked about a couple times, kind of adds this layer of higher level kind of acceptance and understanding on top of the basic cognitive therapy. So it gives you a kind of uh, extra level of kind of ability to remove and, and take a step back and understand what's happening kind of from that psychological distance. Uh, behavioral therapy specifically is about applying the lessons of uh, conditioning to uh, these kind of clinical environments. So trying to basically reinforce positive uh, kinds of patterns of thought and behavior and, and, and penalize negative ones. Um, and then another application of behavioral conditioning therapy is in the context of exposure therapy, uh, where you're essentially trying to habituate, use the, the learning mechanisms of habituation uh, to get rid of uh, kind of obsessive compulsive disorder. And it turns out that when you look at actual individual practitioners, they're best described as being integrative. They kind of take a lot of these different elements and kind of uh, apply them in a custom way to deal with a particular situation that they, in a way that they, that they deem to be the most effective. And so this is by far the most common kind of uh, actual uh, way that people do perform therapy. And then there's a, a number of older kind of traditions, in, including classic, you know, Freudian psychoanalysis, psychodynamic therapy, Jungian kind of uh, ideas, uh, all these kind of other uh, traditions that we won't talk about that probably have, you know, a significant reasonable level of efficacy, but they're not targeted as directly on the specific issues and may not be as effective as some of these other uh, more well-validated approaches. One of the interesting features of these uh, therapies is that they actually are based on cognitive and behavioral science that we've been talking about. So it's a good uh, kind of, you know, basic science to practical uh, benefit transfer, showing how these kind of pure scientific approaches can be applied to solve real world problems. Uh, so that's exciting.